Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. One of the things I want to be doing more of is out of position welding. Overhead, vertical uphill, 6G pipe, all that kind of stuff because that's what helps people get to the point where they're, that, that's what will help people pass a welding test. Passing a welding test is a big deal toward getting that paycheck, feeding your family. So uh, today I'm going to be welding a plate, root pass in a plate. And the reason for that is mainly just to get the settings down the gap and the land and the joint configuration and all that stuff dialed in along with the amperage and or arc force depending on the machine so that then that same setting will work on pipe and then we'll do 6G pipe, 5G pipe later on. Today we also got a tip on what to do when the keyhole gets too big. So before we get into that video with arc shots, tips and tricks, I want to talk a little bit about this uh, weld test stand here. It's from Triangle Engineering. I was talking to them on the phone about ordering some plates and pipes and uh, they offered to let me use this thing for these videos and it's going to come in really handy. Let me give you a little quick look at it here. I've got it temporarily bolted to a big stainless steel flange down there and I've got some little leveling feet and uh, it's temporary. I'm going to be moving this thing to a whole different location here pretty soon but I wanted to get something done with it. And it's got the little work surface there, a little uh, miniature little table for, for working and grinding and whatnot. And so you can see those, those two inch schedule 80 pieces there. I've got some things planned for those, some 6G tests for those. That's actually the first test I ever took was a 6G two inch schedule 80 6010 root 332nd rod and failed the crap out of it. So I need some practice before I do that video. Then here's the rest of it. A little, uh, little shelf there for holding the grinder or chip and hammer brush things like that and you can see this is the part that holds your pipe or plate and it'll hold any pipe any plate in any position at any height and up top there's a brace that stiffens things up and like I said I'm gonna move this thing to a different location so I'm not gonna worry about that just yet and here's a picture from Triangle Engineering's website that shows you just how many different positions and how many different shapes and sizes this thing will hold okay Time to weld. First thing is I've got to prep these things. They come saw cut like this. This, These are 7 inches long. They're 3 eighths inch thick. 7 inches by 4 inches and they have a 37 and a half degree bevel on them. You can also order 22 and a half for structural plate. This is for practice for pipe. So I'm going to stack them up here and go ahead and grind a 332nd. That's 2.4 millimeter land on these things. The land is this flat spot. Instead of having it go to a sharp point as it is uh, with the saw cut, I need a little a little bit of land on there for putting the root pass in there with a 6010. And I clean it up a little bit and use a piece of wire to gap it with. I tried some of these with a 1 8 gap and 1 8 uh, land and I just wound up liking better the 332nd gap, 332nd land. Just using a piece of weld wire bent to get that gap in there. And I didn't, I didn't really spend a lot of time cleaning these because these are just practice joints and really I'm just trying to get the right the right fit up, the right land, the right gap, and the right amperage. Okay, this is set at 70 amps and it's too cold. You see, it's not ever keyholing. Just this laying up top, even though I've got it jammed in there pretty good, I don't hear it coming through the back side like I should. That's, that's not going to get it right there. Now, 80 amps, on the other hand, a bit hot. You can hear the difference in the sound. I'll shut up here for a minute. You hear it just kind of snorkeling through the backside, but the, but it's kind of almost getting out of hand with me. The keyhole is just almost getting too big. 75 amps, just about right. It turned out just to be the the just even just a tad colder would have worked. But if the gap closes up on you, then then might be too cold. So rather rather be just a tad hot than than way too cold. So let's look at this. This is kind of like out of hand here. This is like it starts off okay. And then gradually it just starts getting like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. And I, I've got to, you know, really step out here. Got to really move on. And the keyhole just kind of wants to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and then, you know, it's just kind of trying to bail if it does that rather than just, just fighting it. So let's take a look at what you do when that happens. Like, that's why they, they call it a keyhole. It looks like an old timey keyhole in a door, right? But that keyhole is just a little bit on the large size. So. What I would recommend here, this is just one recommendation by the way, is to instead of starting back in that keyhole, start right above it. And that didn't get I didn't get a hot enough start there like I had hoped, so I'll have to fix that with a grinder a little bit. But just start right above it instead of back into the keyhole. If the keyhole's too big, 
and then just keep weld and then come back later with the grinder and see I've got the hole there that I didn't I didn't close up come back later with a grinder and, and feather it out taper it out just about like that where it's really really thin and then long arc it when you light up long arc it preheat it up and go in there and jam it in there make tiny little circles and then kind of push that hole upward just keep pushing it moving the hole upward until it closes up and then go another several strokes and then whip down and that's the back side right there okay what I would prefer to do though if, if the keyhole is not getting out of hand I prefer to just keep another rod in my hand or or handy and put it in the in the stinger and get right back in there while everything's still good and hot just long arc it for just about a second and then go right back into that keyhole that's that works good for me but you can't always get right back in there and so sometimes you just have to stop and maybe get a grinder out and feather taper a little bit but once again got to keep that keep that thing jammed in there you want to hear it coming through the backside the tight tight arc and it's almost like you're just tapping a little tiny nail with a little tiny hammer in in and out of that puddle tap 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 one way of looking at it anyway okay well that was the root pass let me give you a little a little refresher here again this is the technique for the root pass it's almost you're almost feels like you're scooping out metal sometimes ahead of you and then coming back jamming it in there into the puddle and then just kind of coaxing that thing forward with you this is uphill like I said now after grinding the root pass a little bit getting the slag out of there not completely slick I never have really been a fan of grinding a root pass till it's just completely slick because you take out a lot of metal and you can blow a hole but this is 7018 now and actually trying to fill it flush with one pass that's one that was one idea and I'm really having to go slow to do it so then I changed I changed gears decided I put two passes in there instead of one to fill it up so this one I'm just kind of moving kind of a little quicker not coming out as wide onto the onto the side walls and then coming out with another pass to fill it out flush and you want to be just just flush or slightly below flush not above flush at all and that'll wind that'll give you a nice straight lines on the sides to, uh, to to stay straight on your cover pass see I'm just a little little below flush there and that's going to be okay you don't want to be too far below flush or it's too hard to fill it up without undercut and speaking of undercut you want to hold your toes you to hold those edges for just a good you know maybe a, a full second actually sometimes to avoid undercut or if you've you got a little bit of a low place it just gives it a chance to fill it in and that's that I'll be showing this thing uh, along the way in future videos doing different positions but I just did want to show triangle engineering a little appreciation for letting me let me use it in these videos well that about wraps it up don't forget to hit the subscribe button hit that thumbs up button if you like what you see visit the store and check out those high visibility t-shirts We'll see you next week.